Life in a swanky pad is one of the most common perks rich celebrities enjoy. But not all famous folk want to trick out their own private island. At one time, these celebrities opted for more modest digs, ditching palatial mansions for everything from Hollywood bungalows to cozy condos. Kesha may wake up in the morning feeling like P. Diddy, but she certainly doesn't live like he does. Rather, for a brief time, the TikTok singer called a 1,400-square-foot Spanish-style bungalow in Venice Beach, California home, according to Pop Sugar. Trulia reported that Kesha bought the humble homestead in 2014 for $1.65 million, then sold it a year later for $1.8 million. Though small, the place was apparently cozy with a quote, very romantic and feminine master suite, and French doors that led to a secluded backyard, featuring an outdoor fireplace and arbor-covered hot tub. So fun. Variety's Real E-Stalker blog was less impressed, noting the two bedrooms and bathroom were small. Per the blog, the master bedroom also has a supersized picture window that provides an all-encompassing view of the backyard, as well as a wide-open view of the bathroom from the backyard. A great way to introduce yourself to your neighbors. With a net worth of over $100 million, actor Robert Pattinson could probably afford to plunk down more than the around $2.1 million he paid for an L.A. layer in late 2014. Boasting just 1,940 square feet, Pattinson's pad only came with two bedrooms and two baths, according to Really Stalker. The outlet described the home as rustic, yet thoroughly decked out with high-end furnishings like a quote, combination kitchen and dining area with vaulted open beam ceiling and a $14,000 UK manufactured cast iron range. Trying to disguise the fact that none of the words coming out mean anything. This quaint charmer, however, was a considerable step down from his previous residence. A sprawling 14,026 square foot Spanish style home that he once shared with Kristen Stewart, according to Zillow. Pattinson officially sold the place in January 2014, eight months after cutting things off with his Twilight co-star for good. Vincent Carthizer may have played the hugely successful ad sec Peter Campbell on AMC's hit drama Mad Men, but in real life, the actor doesn't mind keeping it small. Real small. According to Dwell, the A-lister lived in a 580-square-foot L.A. cabin while starring on one of the most successful shows of all time. It's not the way it's supposed to be. Carthizer commissioned a top-to-bottom renovation of what was once multiple rooms into a relatively big open space with, quote, Japanese industrial style. This included everything from custom teak cabinets for the kitchen to a private courtyard with a custom-built dry sauna and a bed on a pulley system that could be raised to the ceiling when not in use. In 2014, Carthizer revealed to Vulture that their renovation was born out of necessity because he purchased it at a time when he'd have to take a loss if he moved. He added, of course, I won't know until I sell the property if I get the money back out of it. Unfortunately, really, Stalker reported that Kaiser purchased the cabin for $547,000, listed it for $808,000, and eventually sold it for $650,000. And those designer renovations likely came in at more than $100,000. Until 2015, superstar actress Jennifer Lawrence called a cozy two-bed, two-and-a-half bath condo in Santa Monica home, describing it as a starter condo that she bought in 2006. Really, Stalker reported that the American Hustle star shelled out $879,000 for the 1,413-square-foot pad and eventually unloaded the joint for a cool $1.15 million. Speaking with Elle in 2012, Lawrence explained her living situation at the time, claiming, I've always lived in a tiny rat-infested apartment in New York, or a little condo in LA or a normal house in Kentucky. I think it would be very bizarre to live in a big mansion by myself. I, I grew up on a farm and I played with horses and did sports. That kind of puts her 2014 purchase of a massive 5,550 square foot house in Los Angeles and 2017 purchase of a $9 million, 3,200 square foot Tribeca condo into a strange perspective. That is until you also consider that Forbes declared her the world's highest paid actress in 2015, thanks to the $52 million she raked in over the previous two years. Christina Ricci might have an estimated $18 million net worth, but she lives pretty modestly regardless of which coast she chooses. 
In 2015, the star purchased a $2 million townhouse in Brooklyn's Fort Greene neighborhood. Because apparently acting as an insane 19th century axe murderer really pays off. Do I look like a brutal killer to you? Variety reported that the home boasts around 2,200 square feet, three stories, and three bedrooms, practically a mansion by New York standards, but average just about anywhere else. On the West Coast, the Adams Family star snagged a 1,891 square foot bungalow in 2005 for just over $1.5 million, according to Real East Stalker. Unfortunately, this was just as the California real estate bubble was about to pop. So when she tried to sell it four years later, she only listed it at $1.25 million. Three years later, she still owned the place, according to Trulia, who reported that she began leasing it out for $8,000 a month. In 2014, Richie relisted for roughly $1.69 million, eventually unloading it after almost a year for just over $1.3 million. The Studio City, California house that rocker Pete Wentz lived in from 2012 to 2014 might not sound all that modest if you go by the flowery description provided by Trulia, which lists the four-bedroom, three baths as, quote, situated in the foothills amongst a forest of tall trees, waterfalls, and exotic plantings. If it sounds fancy, it's not. At least not compared to his previous digs. During the three and a half years he was married to fellow musician Ashley Simpson, the couple lived in a five-bedroom, six-and-a-half-bath Mediterranean home that boasts a staggering 7,100 square feet, according to Realtor.com. Other features included a winding staircase as well as quotes, a spa, open patio space, a breakfast room, beam ceilings, and a meditation garden with a fountain and fire pit. From this moment forward, you can like decide how you're going to be and like let your past inform who you are, but it doesn't like confine you to being that. When the pair split in 2011, they put the house on the market for a whopping $4 million. Wentz later listed his Studio City spot for $1.23 million, making it seem like a shanty in comparison. NFL Hall of Famer Deion Sanders transitioned from a legendary career on the football field to the lucrative world of sports broadcasting. His success translated to an estimated net worth of $40 million, according to Celebrity Net Worth, meaning primetime can afford to live basically wherever he wants, even in a 600-square-foot house in Cedar Hill, Texas, according to Realtor.com. You're successful, so you build this monstrosity of a home, then you start living in it, and over time, over time, you get wisdom. Sanders built his tiny wooded retreat for the show Tiny House Nation, and though it's small, it doesn't lack pizzazz featuring a quote, spacious room, spa-like bathroom, home theater, and rooftop deck complete with a canvas awning for yoga that also happens to convert into another screen for outdoor movie watching. This puny pad packs an elegant punch. In the interest of full disclosure, we should also mention that while Sanders' shrimpy suite was being constructed, he and his family lived in a 7,000-square-foot rental in Dallas, according to Realtor.com. Even this was a downgrade from the family's previous residence. A $12.75 million, 29,122-square-foot behemoth in Prosper, Texas. Fox's Glee was a full-on phenomenon that made a cappella singing cool. Without it, we probably wouldn't have Pitch Perfect. And star Leah Michelle would have never crossed over from the stage to TV. Nonetheless, the actress was living a pretty modest life during her days on the show which really is perplexing considering she was already a Broadway star at the time. According to the New York Daily News, Michelle bought a $1.4 million Los Angeles home in 2012 at the height of Glee's popularity. At the time, she was raking in an estimated $40,000 per episode, yet chose to live in a cozy two-bedroom. Of course, the space was fit for a modest queen. The kitchen was dripping with marble and it had a quote, solar-heated saltwater pool. Nevertheless, Michelle upgraded to a $3 million four-bedroom home in 2015 that reportedly has a two-story gym. Since everyone needs two stories worth of workout equipment, she reportedly sold her two-bedroom cottage for just over $1.8 million and turned a modest profit. All you need is just surround yourself with the people that you love, like these things, like nothing matters. So we just have to take care of ourselves. Mark Zuckerberg's home might be worth $7 million, but there's no way on the planet it would cost that much if it were anywhere but Silicon Valley, where real estate is notoriously out of control. Yes, it's pretty. Yes, it has a nice porch. It even has five bathrooms, which means every bedroom gets their own toilet in peace. 
It's probably even big enough that he could invite over both Winklevoss twins. And they'd be able to completely pretend the other doesn't exist. But it's still not worth a lot compared to how much Zuckerberg could have spent. According to Forbes, the Facebook mogul is worth $62.3 billion. But then again, how much does a person actually need? Mark, it's freezing in here. Jarvis, can you turn the temperature up? Oh, Jarvis only listens to me. I'll fix that. Zuckerberg might have pinched pennies with his residence, but he spent a lot to make his property more private. According to the San Jose Mercury, he spent more than $30 million buying four houses that surrounded his Palo Alto residence and planned to bulldoze them and rebuild four smaller houses in their place. I was on a show called The Office, and I literally became famous overnight. One day I was a waiter, and then the next day I was Jim from The Office. Pam is just about the only person who would have been excited about John Krasinski's Hollywood bachelor pad. And that's because she's used to cozying up for Scranton's frigid winters. But it turns out Krasinski's wife, Emily Blunt, wasn't too keen on the small two-bedroom house because Krasinski unloaded it the year after their wedding. The Office star purchased the 1,279-square-foot property for just over $1 million in 2006, a year after he hit it big with the beloved sitcom. It had a prime location just off the Sunset Strip, but when he listed the property in 2011, he ended up selling it at a loss. According to Zillow, that was an unfortunate trend in Hollywood real estate at the time. This just got uncomfortable <laughs> for me. After selling the bachelor pad, the couple upgraded to a gorgeous Park Slope townhouse before ending up in an impressive $11 million Brooklyn Heights condo. According to the Wall Street Journal, the pair purchased two adjacent units that could be combined into a single dream home. Matt Damon even lives in the building's $16.75 million penthouse. One of the most unjust atrocities in modern television was the fact that Chris Daughtry lost on American Idol. However, that might have actually worked in his favor because he got to have a legitimate career in his own right. The star has an estimated $10 million net worth, but at the height of his idol fame, he lived just like everyone else. It was like the stress of life was going to be the death of me. And I remember uh -huh. like, this lyric, I, I was like, another day, another battle, we all have a cage to rattle. According to Zillow, Daughtry purchased his North Carolina home in 2006 for $690,000. He lived in the four-bedroom, three-and-a-half bath with his wife and four kids. And two of Daughtry's children had to share a bedroom. Despite the less-than-ideal sleeping arrangement, his home was actually an expansive 3,600 square feet and had a saltwater pool, spa, and professional putting green. Not bad, but imagine the price tag if that was in California. He listed the property for sale in 2011. Apparently, Elijah Wood doesn't need a lot to be happy. Just a quaint home in a cool city. According to the Daily Mail, the star purchased a classic Victorian home, complete with gingerbread trim, for just $1.75 million in 2013. He actually downgraded from his more expensive Santa Monica digs for the Austin property. Thanks for pointing that out. Wood's home might barely break $1 million. But it's 3,285 square feet and has four bedrooms, four and a half baths, and three living rooms. A perfect palace for a hobbit. I couldn't fit in here. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Nikki Swift videos about your favorite slubs are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that bell so you don't miss a single one.